Okay, I got a request for some extra help with distributions and correlations. Um, and this, this is the material in exercises 12 and 13. So what I thought I would do is run through what you're doing in those two exercises with two sample statements, one a distribution, one that's a distribution and one that's a correlation. The distribution is just the sentence that was actually the example in the original exercise. I'm going to do that pretty quickly because I think it's straightforward. And then I've got an example of a correlation, um, so which, which is this statement here. In poor black communities, women are more likely to work in the formal economy than men. Um, so I'm going to run through both of these. First, looking at the stuff you want to do for exercise 12, identifying the parts of the claim and the source of the claim, and then uh, run through them again in exercise 13 and look at the correlation diagram. Okay, so, I mean, the analysis stuff I wanted you to do, I think, is fairly straightforward. Um, it's basically a, 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 an elementary logic exercise where you take a sentence in English and you understand the parts of it and what logical work they're doing. So I wanted you to identify the quantifier, the F, and the G, because um, these are the basic parts of a quantified categorical statement. So in our sample statement, 92% uh, of Canadian adults own a cell phone. So uh, the quantifier is 92%. Your first category, F, is Canadian adults, and your category, G, is people who own a cell phone, right? Um, and when we go over to our claim here, the majority of poor renting families in America spend over half their income on housing. We see that the quantifier is now the majority. So it's not quite as uh, precise as the previous sentence. We don't have an exact number, but we know that it's you know, more than 50%. Our first category is poor renting families in America, and our second category is uh, people who spend over half of their income on housing. So on the exercise sheet, that would look like this, right? Um, the source of the, okay, so yeah, quantifier, the majority, F, uh, poor renting families in America, G, people who spend more than half of their income on housing. And we want G to be represented as a category. So we're gonna say people who there. Um, in the original sentence, it's just phrased as a property, S um, spend half their income, more than half their income on housing. But I want to emphasize here that we're looking at uh, a relationship between two categories. And if we were doing my logic class, we could go into more detail then about categorical logic. So what's the source of this claim? Well, uh, like I say in the example, um, Desmond cites the uh, American Housing Survey, which is part of the Census Bureau, right? Um, and actually, we can, if we wanted to, get that information for Lorain County because uh, the, cen the Census Bureau um, has information on everyone. All right, now look at this next claim. In poor black communities, women were more likely to work in the formal economy than men. So... Actually, there are two implicit quantifiers here. In the first, so in the previous sentence, we just had one quantifier, the majority. Um, and now we've got two, right? Uh, that is, there's some proportion of women who work in the formal economy and some proportion of men that work in the formal economy. And the latter quantifier is smaller than the first one. We're comparing two quantifiers now, rather than having one quantified categorical statement. So when you do uh, the F and the G, it's going to look like this. Statement one, the quantifier is some unknown proportion. The F and the G are women in black communities and people who work in the formal economy. Statement two is some smaller um, proportion, 
and it's men who, in black communities and people who work in the financial, um, in the formal economy. So um, we don't have exact numbers here, although elsewhere in that passage, he mentions that 50% uh, of black men in Milwaukee are unemployed. So we can then imagine that um, the percentage of women working in the formal economy is larger than 50. Um, right? Now, it's interesting when you dig down to the footnote, uh, and I didn't bring my book up here, but that's okay. Um, the footnote is actually a, a, a survey uh, by a, a book uh, by Mark Levine called The Crisis Continues Black Male Joblessness in Milwaukee. Um, plus, there's a public radio piece about, it's probably just um, about the same publication. And um, so although he says that this applies to black communities in general, um, it, it looks like his data, I have to read more carefully, is really just about Milwaukee. It fits, this fits my general understanding of the way poor communities work. But um, I would like to actually drill down on this and find out if it is true, for instance, in um, uh, Lorain County. Um, and the, most of the footnote is, uh, so this is uh, footnote 10 on page 360, just about the relationship between income and problems renting. So although men are, he says is black men are less likely to have jobs than black women, but if they do, they're more likely to be paid more, which is, you know, it's, it, it's a weird bit of intersectionality um, where uh, you get the interaction of racism and sexism operating in strange ways. Okay, so that's the basics of those two. The next thing we want to do is to actually look at um, how to draw diagrams for them. Okay, so now let's look at the distribution. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the diagram in the word processor. You can do this any, um, all sorts of ways. You can um, uh, just write it out with a pencil, take a picture of it. You can use whatever tools are available to you. On the test, um, well, um, I will find a way to make it easier so that you don't have to dig down um, into a lot of tools. But in any case, to make these diagrams, you just need the table function in your word processor. So the majority of poor working families in America spend over half of their income on housing. Like I said before, we've got two um, uh, categories here. Um, so I'm going to copy this down here, right? poor renting families in America and people who spend more than half of their income on housing. Now, in each case, there's a potential contrast, right? We can talk of, if we talk about poor renting families in America, we can also talk about the complementary class, people who aren't poor or aren't rentals or aren't families. Um, although families is probably meant to encompass just households in general. But in any case, people who aren't poor renters. Um, and, uh, but we're, our, our sentence here isn't making any claims about that complementary class, so we don't need to worry about it. Another way of thinking about it is that if you want to think of F as a variable, um, poor rent, poor, you know, is the, are these people poor renting families? Um, you can, that variable might have two values, yes or no, but we're only making a claim about the people who fall under the category yes. So that's all we need to worry about, right? Um, on the other hand, because we're saying the majority, with G, we actually are making a claim both about people who, in the class, the main class, who spend more than half of their rent income on housing and those that do not. So in the end, this is just represented with a single bar. And so um, I'm going to insert a table here. If we wanted to insert just the bar itself, 
right? We would only need two cells. Um, but I also want room for labels. So I'm going to have uh, cells on the side and then another row on top like this. Um, and so I want to put in my labels here first. Spend more than half their income on housing. 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 And um, spend less than half their income on housing. And we're going to want this all in red just to make it um, consistent with our other answers. Uh, and we want red lines. This is poor renting families. And really, um, we're going to erase these extra borders because we don't need them. Um, we just want the borders for the chart part. Um, we go there, and then this one we do want all borders. And we know it's a majority, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the labels sit here, like that. Um, we don't know, I'll give a little space on the top. We don't know how big the majority is, so I'm just going to draw it about like that. And then I'm going to shade this area. Um, to let you know that this is essentially what we're what I'm doing here is I'm making a bar graph using Microsoft tables. So the bar graph um, is where is my fill? Oh, oh we want to make oh it like that. So the bar graph is just two cells at the table. And this may not be the best way of doing it. I could actually use the bar graph function, but this is quick and dirty. And then the other thing I think I want to do is hide the grid lines so that it looks more like a proper chart to you. There we go. So we see you've got this bar here, um, uh, and it just shows that um, more than half of the bar is people who spend more than half of their income on housing. So we've got um, two variables here, but we're only concerned with one of them, of uh, poor renting families, and we're not concerned with the contrast class, uh, families that aren't poor and don't rent. Poor renting families, or poor renting families. Okay, now contrast that with the other one. Um, so here we go. In poor black communities, women were more likely to work in the formal economy than men. It's easiest, let's just do this in terms of um, variables. So um, we can have one variable gender, and it's going to be men and women, and we know that this isn't a, a real these categories aren't really exhaustive or exclusive or anything like that. But when we are making models, we always have to simplify. And that's what that's how this data had been simplified. And then um, the other variable will be uh, works in the formal economy. And the answer and the variables there are just yes or no. Um, so now, essentially, we've got four boxes that we want to worry about, right? Um, so if we want to make a table out of it, and again, this may not be the best way of doing it, but 
it's easy. We've got four boxes that are going to be either shaded or not. Um, and then we want space for labels. So uh, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, right? Um, I'm going to put men and women at the top. Actually, let's do women first. Women, men, and then work in the formal economy. Doesn't work in the formal economy. Right? Um, and I'm going to kill the grid lines. and then resurrect them in red for the actual part where we're going to have a chart. Oops. And then our uh, font can be red as well. some more space here make that a bit bigger okay so that's where the chart's going to be um let's make the chart taller all right so we know about half the men work in the formal economy so having this bar be the same size as this one makes sense this one however is going to be bigger than the other one so what we want to do is select that part of the table and just move that. It's not working. Why is it not working? Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to merge these cells um, and then draw a new line that is higher. And that will be. Um, draw a new line here that is higher. And it's not letting me do it. All right, this is an annoying thing. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'm just going to split this cell repeatedly. Let's do it like this. We're going to put that back in, get rid of the border painter. We're going to add a row there and make this about half the size of the whole thing. And then merge these cells here. When we do that, and merge these cells here. Now we've got it. All right. And we can shade this cell. Um, we'll shade it a dark red. And then this cell, maybe a lighter red. Like that. All right. Um, there may be other ways to properly make this diagram. Uh, in fact, certainly the easiest and the way that I normally do it when we are just in, um, in, in an in-person classroom is to use a marker on the whiteboard or pencil and paper, but um, this is uh, the best we can do for now. So that is the correlation diagram. So the thing to understand here is the correlation diagram consists of four boxes. Right? You need to find a way to draw four boxes, right? 
and the, the these four boxes come up because you've got two variables that each take two values. So women and men divide up the box one way, works in the formal economy, doesn't work in the formal economy, divides the box up the other way. But these lines aren't always the same. If there is a correlation, this level here is different than this level. And that is really all you, we mean by a correlation. And so we can, we can add some numbers here if we wanted. Um, we know that this is about 50%, right? And then this one over here is going to be somewhat more than that. Right. Um, so we, it's just uh, it's it's a simple bar graph for two categories, women and men. So hopefully that will make it easier to understand what the, what's going on with these diagrams. I'm going to talk about them more as we go ahead, because what I'm going to be doing is we're going to look at two articles that Desmond wrote, um, and I'm just going to try and break down the contents of those articles using the Gire's methods for understanding a scientific event. Great. Thank you.